Hi, welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of In Every Mirror She's Black by Lola Akinmade Akerstrom. In Every Mirror She's Black came out at the beginning of September. I found out about it maybe a month or two before that, and I was really excited about it. So I was really excited when it became a book in the month selection in September. This book follows three different black women who end up living in Sweden, specifically in Stockholm. And it follows the different experiences they have with racism, with sexism, and just the general cultural differences that they face. The first woman that we meet is Kemi, a marketing executive who lives in Washington DC at the beginning. She's Nigerian American and she's a little bit frustrated in her career and she's looking to move up, but something else that takes up a lot of her attention is her dismal love life. She really just want to find a guy to settle down with and have a long-term relationship with, but despite all of her best efforts and dating and seeing people, nothing is really working out for her. Early on, she gets a job offer and she ultimately accepts it and ends up moving to Stockholm, Sweden to work in this large company, Von London Marketing, and to help the company make sure that their advertising is racially sensitive after having a PR blunder earlier. Next, we meet Brittany Ray. She's currently a flight attendant and she's in a long-term relationship, but she meets this guy on a plane one day when she's working in the first class section and he he really is interested in her and eventually they end up starting some kind of a relationship and over the course of several months she ends up also relocating to Stockholm to be with him. And finally we meet Muna. Muna is the youngest of the three. The other two are both in their 30s. Muna is only 18 when the book begins. She's a refugee originally from Somalia and at the beginning of the book she's living in this asylum a ways north I think of Stockholm. Now that she's gotten her immigration status in a good place, she's able to move down to Stockholm and kind of enter the next phase of her life as an official resident of Sweden. In the end, she gets a job working as a janitor and she cleans that same company where Kemi is now working. These three women are connected by one very specific man. His name is Yanni and he is the CEO of Von London Marketing, which is where Kemi is now working and where Muna is serving as a janitor. He's the one that is pursuing a romantic relationship with Brittany. He's at the center of why both Kemi and Brittany end up in Sweden. He also plays a big role in Muna and her story arc throughout the book as well. One thing that I like about In Every Mirror She's Black is the kind of perspective on a country through the eyes of people who are immigrants to that country. On one level, it's something I can kind of relate to. I have been an immigrant in two different countries. I did live for about a year in Spain and I also lived for about a year in Peru. And while my experiences, well, well, first of all, while, while Spain and Peru are very different countries from Sweden, I also had a very different experience um, in both based on my different identity. You can see I'm a white woman and I don't really face the kind of racism and just maybe other nuances that the women in this book face. This book is in many ways about being an immigrant to a foreign country, but it's also largely about the experiences of black women specifically and the unique experiences they have Sweden is a very white country. I don't know how big of a population they have that is immigrant or non-white, but I, the way I understand it is I, I do think it is a fairly cohesive country in terms of being, of being very white. And so you can see the types of struggles that these three women face. But one thing that I read from this author is that she specifically wanted this book to show how different, uh, different black women are and the different kinds of experiences they have can be. Black women are not a monolith, and she really wanted this book to convey just how just how disparate their experiences can be. Even if they're in the same city at the same time, they can face very different realities and struggles and triumphs and just different milestones. Each chapter follows each of the three women in succession, always in a consistent order, although the order changes from part to part. We kind of get to see what each woman is up to around the same time as each other kind of point of view, but it's not in the first person, it's it's in third person throughout. We get to see the very different reasons that we're going to Sweden and the different goals they have while they're in Sweden. One thing that struck me about this book is the characters are not too far on one side or the other in terms of likability or relatability necessarily. I think most of the characters do really inhabit that kind of gray area between good and bad. And focusing on Brittany and Kemi specifically, I often had a hard time reconciling with the kind of choices they made, the kind of urges they had, or the kind of or the kinds of thoughts they had, the way they reacted to things. 
Like I liked both of the characters, but they definitely made a lot of choices that I wouldn't necessarily have wanted them to make. They made a lot of mistakes and they weren't always likable, to be frank. Muna is different though. I really liked Muna and I really felt bad for her. I think she's the one that I had the most empathy for, the most sensitivity for, and I just really wanted her story to work out. And I think her story is the most tragic of the three. I mean, her beginning is the hardest with her being a refugee and having lost her entire family. And at the beginning, she loses another close person to her. And I, I just really see her struggling. And I just, I really, I really kept hoping that things would turn around for her. And I think I was the most emotionally invested in her story out of the three main characters. Brittany's story is also difficult. I think she makes some mistakes early on, especially, and she ends up in a particular position that is, it's tricky for sure. It's definitely a tricky situation that she's in, being with Yanni and his, his family and his circle of people around him and just kind of facing the weird reactions she gets from his family. It seems like it could be racism, but there might be something else going on too. And I think she gets herself into a bit of a mess there. So not really as tragic as Muna, but definitely something that you could see it getting worse for her. I think Kemi had maybe the best time of it in a certain way. On the one hand, she does have the most power or agency of the three in that she, she earns her own money, she makes a good amount of money, and she doesn't seem to be as tied down by circumstances that are out of her control as much as the other two women. And although she's having some difficulties in her new company and being respected and, and just really fitting in with the company culture, she's also simultaneously very focused on her love life and finding someone who will be a good partner for her. Early on, I did like her, Although later on, I started to be more and more frustrated by Kemi's thoughts and desires and choices that I could see her potentially making. And so she started to bother me more later on in the book. But I think in the end, I think, I think in the end, she ends up where she needs to be. And so perhaps her story is the most hopeful of the three, interestingly enough. And we really do have to talk about Yanni as well, because Yanni, as I said before, he's kind of at the center of a lot of this. He's an interesting character. He's, on the one hand, you could call him the villain of the story. Not that this book is set up like a thriller where it has a villain necessarily, but he's kind of the catalyst for a lot of the things that happen in this book, but he's also, he, he can be a force for good and a force for bad. And later on as you start to get to know him more and kind of understand his identity and his background and things that have happened in his past you start to understand him more but i don't know if that makes him necessarily more forgivable or likable or if that makes him actually worse in some way more problematic in some way he he's a tough one i often find myself a little bit confused by him or a little bit concerned about what was happening between him and some other characters but I also kind of felt empathetic for him and like I wanted I wanted certain things in his life to change so that he could grow into himself in a better way. But I don't know, he, he was definitely problematic in a lot of ways. And so he's definitely one of those characters that's kind of gray, leaning towards more on the bad side. But yeah, I had, I, I have mixed feelings about him as you can see. One more thing that I really liked about this book is the diverse languages that we get to see in it. Of course, the book is written in English, so there's that. We also get to see a lot of Swedish because it is indeed set in Sweden. The author is based in Sweden, so I assume she speaks the language to a certain degree, maybe fluently, I'm not exactly sure, but there's a lot of Swedish in here, which I thought was really interesting. Additionally, with, with Muna in particular, we also get to see her speaking in Somali and Arabic with the different characters that she interacts with. And so I thought that was cool that we got to see so much of her two languages as well as Swedish. To a much lesser degree, we also get to see a little bit of Jamaican Patois spoken with, with Brittany's family and a little bit of Igbo spoken with Kemi's Nigerian family as well. I believe that's what it was. So 
I'm just really fascinated by different languages. I love getting to see different languages in books. I would like to learn several different languages. So I thought that was a nice touch that really amplified the different characters and their own backgrounds and their own cultures as well. So all in all, I really enjoyed In Every Mirror She's Black. I thought it was a really interesting and eye-opening book. I think it really is thought-provoking in a lot of ways and it shows the different kinds of experiences women who have certain similarities can have, but they're definitely very different women as well. So you see those differences play out based on the nuances of their identities and their careers and their incomes and their their mental health, all kinds of different factors that, that influence the course of their lives. In the end, I give this book four stars and I'd be really happy to read more from the author in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did and ring the bell if you don't want to miss any more of my videos. I read a fair bit, so I'll be publishing at least one or two book review videos every single week. And in the next few months, I'll also start making additional content as well, so you don't want to miss that. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!